Today we're going to do something a little different. This is something called a Teensy microcontroller. Uh, my friends and I use them all the time for high altitude weather balloons. Or for rockets. How's it going, John? Or for our, our satellites projects. We'll put a spot to put a teensy in, like this. Yeah, there, there's a teensy here on this. Uh, this, is, this is a free space optical communications. Way more powerful than an Arduino. They're much smaller and they're the same price. And you can even code it in the same uh, the same environment as an Arduino. So it's very very easy to get up and running with one of these. But sometimes you just you really need like an integrated package for everything. So that's what we're actually going to do today. As as in an attempt to learn the tools of the trade for actually making microcontrollers, we're going to make a Teensy. Enter this board. Now this isn't that pretty. Now this is my Teensy. I'm calling it the Stegos board because it has a Stegosaur on it, and it's awesome. Uh, and I've I've already populated this guy, but now I, ha I haven't plugged it in or anything like that. We're gonna try to debug it and hopefully program something with this microcontroller. Alright, so f the first thing we need to do is we need to give this guy power. Um, now, I could just plug it into the computer. You know, USB ports are voltage protected and, and, and stuff like that, but it's probably not a good idea since I really don't know if there's a short in this or not. I want to make sure that I don't like destroy my laptop. So, we're going to uh, take a USB cable and cut it up. This way we can plug our Teensy into a voltage protected power supply where we can limit the amps that it's going to be able to draw, which is important. Okay, two lines right there. You can see I messed up these pins right here. This is my first time soldering something this small, but uh, Hopefully it works. First time plugging it in. Let's see what happens. Okay, solid start. Uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Now let's probe some voltage lines. You can see our power pin is not connected. Okay, luckily that's a uh, Easy fix. Okay, I figured it out. Somebody had AC coupled the scope probe so it couldn't see the DC voltage. All right, first check passed. We see the voltage in. Step one down. Okay, that is the MK20 processor. If you look at that right there, that is it trying to load a program, not finding anything, and then crashing every 50 microseconds. Processor works. Let's move on. So I changed my bootloader schematic right before I sent it off. Somehow the VDD never got connected. Don't you hate stupid mistakes? If you ever want to feel like you can't solder, try soldering two quad flat pins. That was brutal. But we're good to go now. Let's plug it in. Let's 
Look at that awesome clock signal. It's so clean. So this, the clock only comes online after the bootloader has programmed the processor, which means working. Awesome. We just need to get the USB communications working. Okay, it's being recognized. If we look here, that uh, Teensy half K bootloader shows up when we use LS USB. Um, so the USB lines are good. We just need to uh, we just need to upload it for the first time. Let's do it. I couldn't get the Teensy to show up under the port list. Very first time it runs, it's not configured to, to see the computer. So clicking verify actually made it work just great. Yes! Mission success. This thing works. Uh, we can tell that it's working because it has this beautiful little green light. Can you see that? You gotta love that light. Turns out the only bug that was in this design was the VSS and the VDD connection on the bootloader was messed up because I changed a schematic and, and was dumb. But everything else on this thing worked great. Man, whenever I wanna make an electronic gizmo now, I don't have to go and like figure out how to integrate it with an Arduino or with a Teensy or, or anything like that. I can make a board that's all my own. It has all my own parts on it. There's something about that that's highly satisfying. I'm super happy about this. Thanks so much for watching. If you didn't get it all, don't worry about that because Jam Labs is really more about just sort of that feeling of exploration rather than exact how-to guides. If you watch it and you enjoyed it, you're just like, I don't know what's going on, but this is kind of fun to watch. That's exactly what you should be getting out of these projects. Leave your comments below. If you have any questions about the project itself, you know, I'll be in the comments. I, I want to answer lots of stuff because I think this is super cool. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day, everybody. Teensies.